Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss some challenging and tricky questions from March 2017, Paper 1, Variant 2. In this lesson, we will discuss some difficult questions from this paper in detail, so you can have better understanding of these concepts, and also you can improve your conceptual understanding of these topics. Let's study together. Let's improve together. For question number 19, it is given to us a car of mass 1400 kg is traveling on a straight horizontal road at a constant speed of 25 meters per second. The power output from the car's engine is 30 kilowatts. I mean here the power output from the car's engine is 30 kilowatts. So simply we can write down here. The car then travels up a slope at 2 degrees to the horizontal, maintaining the same constant speed. What is the output power of the car's engine when traveling up the slope? So we can simply say this one is V1 and here we can say this is V2. So this one is the V2. So this value we need to calculate. What is output power of the car's engine? So first thing we need to understand, if you need to go up the slope, power has to be greater. So it simply means that in this case, car has to provide extra power. So simply we can write down P2 has to be equal to P1 plus P extra up the slope. And if we can find value of P extra, we can calculate value of P2. So in this case, P1 is already given to us. This is 30 kilowatts. So we need to calculate P extra. So we can say P extra p extra this one will be equal to the extra force times the speed so what is extra force in this case in this case car has to do work against component of the weight and that component of weight we can simply draw here that component of the weight will be mg sine of 2 degrees. We can, the weight of the car is acting down. So this is weight of the car and it has two component. One component is down the slope and this angle is 2 degrees. So this component is mg sine of 2 degrees. Now force has to do extra work against this component of weight. And so extra power is required up the slope. So simply we can say this force, extra force, here is only a resistance is acting on this one. But in this case, now there is a resistance and also component of weight is acting down the slope. So car has to use more power to keep the same speed. So P extra times speed of the car. P extra in this case is mg sine of 2 degrees times v. So this is v. Now simply we can plug in values. m is the mass of the car. So this is 1400 and g is 9.81 multiplied with sine of 2 degrees times speed of the car. Speed is the same. So simply if you calculate this one, your final answer will be 12.2 kilowatts. So this is the extra power required up the slope. So the total power of the car here means the P2. Now we can calculate. So this is 12.2 2 kilowatts. So the total power required now, this is equal to 42.2 kilowatts. So the answer for this question is C. So this is how you can answer this problem. In the exam, most of the students, they forgot to add this one. So they forgot to add this power. The power required when the car is moving on horizontal road. So they forgot to add this one and they got this answer. So they got wrong answer. But the answer for this question is C. Total power. Now extra power is required. So you can calculate extra power and you can add to P1 and you can find your final answer. So this is one way to answer this problem. Same question but using different approach. We will consider forces acting on the car means all forces acting on the car and we will try to figure out the total power required when the car is moving up the slope. In this case, first of all, when the car is moving on horizontal surface, in this case car is applying force forward. So this is the thrust actually or simply you can say this is the force by car engine. This is the forward 
force and there is also force acting backward and that force simply we can say is resistive force and this force can be due to friction from the road and also due to air resistance as in this case car is moving with constant speed it means that these two forces are equal as speed is constant so it simply means that f is equal to f r now we can calculate value of f r power is given to us power is equal to force time speed means the power output of the car so we can calculate value of f simply we can write down p divided by v power output of the car is given that is equal to 30 kilowatts so we have to multiply by 1000 and we will divide this one by speed of the car and we will get our final answer that is equal to 1000 200 newtons so the value of the resistive force is 1200 newtons now the second case we can consider when the car is moving up the slope in this case resistive forces still are the same because speed of the car is constant so this is one force acting on the car when is when the car is moving up the slope and the second force acting on the car is now due to this angle means component of the weight is also acting along the slope and that is opposing the force by car's engine so car in this case has to apply extra force so we can say let's say this one is f we can say this one is f1 here so we can also change names so you will not get confused so let's say this is f1 now this is f2 f2 has to be greater than f1 because it has to balance extra force and that is component of weight so this is weight of the car that is acting vertically downwards we can resolve this one into two components one component is acting perpendicular to the slope and one is acting along the slope and this angle has to be two degrees so this component acting along the slope this component is mg sine of two degrees because this is opposite to the angle opposite side of triangle that is sine theta so this is mg sine of two degrees so we can write down this force here so this is mg sine of two degrees now we need to calculate output power of the car so we can write down this is p we can say this is the P1 and P2 in this case this is the total power and this is equal to F2 times V power output of car P2 is equal to F2 times V but F2 in this case is equal to FR plus mg sine of 2 degrees so we can replace f2 with this so we can write down fr plus mg sine of 2 degrees times the speed of the car and we have value of fr that is equal to 1200 m is given that is 1400 and g is 9.81 multiplied by sine of 2 degrees and multiplied by 25 so this is the speed of the car speed of the car does not change in this case now if we solve this one our final answer in this case will be 42.2 kilowatts so this is an other way you can calculate and this is the best way so you need to consider all the forces acting on the car and you can multiply that with speed of the car and you can calculate output power of the car so this is the best way to approach this kind of problems so the answer for this question is 42 so the answer is c for question number 34 it is given to us a coil contains n turns of insulated copper wire wound onto a cylindrical iron core of diameter capital d the copper wire has a diameter small d the resistivity of the copper is rho diameter capital capital D is much greater than diameter small d. We need to calculate what is total resistance between two ends of the coil. This question is quite straightforward one. If you understand what is the resistance, the resistance simply is equal to rho times L divided by A. And this L is the length of the wire, I mean this is the total length of the wire. We can say this is length of the wire. So first thing you need to understand. So this is length of the wire. And this is cross-sectional area of the wire. So we can say this is cross-sectional area of 
Y. So these things you need to understand. And rho is the resistivity of material. Now, in this case, if we can find out what is L and what is A, then we can find our final answer. In this case, A is equal to pi by 4 times d squared means the diameter of the wire we have to use diameter here because the answer is in terms of diameter of the wire and also in terms of diameter of iron core so this is value of a now the difficult part is how to calculate l the length of one turn of wire so imagine that this one is the wire diameter of this one is small d and this one is the iron core diameter of this one is capital d if i wound this one on this iron core what is length of one turn of wire and that one we can find out simply that one will be equal to pi times capital T so this is for one turn only but in this case we have n turns of wire so we can say L total or we can say ln this will be equal to n times pi times capital T so this is the total length this is total L we can say this is L total now simply we need to plug in here and we can calculate final value of R so this is rho and L is equal to n times pi times capital D and divided by A A is equal to pi by 4 d square we can simplify this we can write down this is 4 rho n pi capital d divided by pi times d square so this pi we can cancel with this so the final answer is 4 rho n times capital d divided by d square so this is value of with Resistance. So this is how we can calculate resistance. So you need to understand how to calculate length of the wire. So in this case, this one is our iron core. Its diameter is capital D. And if we have one turn of the wire on this one, the length of this one is equal to this. Now, if you have n number of turns, so you have to multiply by n. And then simply you need to plug in in this equation and you can calculate value of R. So in this case, our final answer, final answer answer has to be A. So this is the final answer. I hope this question is clear to you.